Hi everyone, I'm Jeremy Reeves, head blender of Cornell and Deal Pipe Tobacco Company, and uh, this is our next installment of a series of videos called uh, Cornell and Deal's Tobacco Selections. Uh, today we're going to be talking about white burley and dark burley. Uh, I've mentioned it in other videos, but uh, we are a small manufacturer and um, so rather than having lots of different selections of a particular type of tobacco um, we tend to have one sometimes sometimes two but in in the case of these two tobaccos just one each grade that gets used as that type of tobacco in all of the products that we produce from c and d to glps to Briarworks to costello to two friends um, if you see white burley or dark burley listed on a uh, product that we've produced it's actually these tobaccos that i'm talking about here today so our white burley um, this is an air cured type leaf um, burley in general is is air cured um, there's no flu cured burley uh, and some would say, well, what about dark fire? That's a fire cured burley, but really uh, tobacco farmers and tobacco merchants don't consider dark fired a burley. So burley is by definition air cured. Um, white burley uh, predominantly comes from Tennessee or from Kentucky, but you also find crops in Maryland, uh, in Ohio, in Pennsylvania. Uh, the specific white burley that we have been using for the past several years um, and we still have a good supply of it and anticipate using it well into the future it is actually from Maryland. Um, it is a light air cured uh, style leaf and what that means is that it has just gone through the air curing process and that the leaves tend to come from central to the, the stalk. They're not upper stalk position leaves. Um, dark burley, by comparison, tends to come from central to upper stalk positions on a tobacco plant because those uh, tend to be beefier. Uh, the thickness of the lamina is, is beefier. Uh, they tend to be more oily and they are harvested later in the season. Uh, they tend to have larger quantities of nicotine and they're very, very dense in flavor and they give you a, a darker color, but they also are, are beefy enough to go through a secondary fermentation process, which is one of the things that separates white burley or light air cured tobacco from dark burley or dark air cured tobacco. The secondary fermentation process is actually similar to the fermentation process that a, uh, a cigar type leaf would go through where it is stacked um, and allowed to build up heat. Uh, the beginning stages of essentially composting are allowed to happen, but they constantly are, are tossing the leaves um, and, and reorganizing them on the stack so that it doesn't actually compost, it doesn't actually degrade. You just want that heat built up and then maintained and the tobacco is shifted around so that it all is subjected to an even uh, amount of this heat. And that fermentation gives you a really deep, uh, dark, sort of interesting, almost clove or wine kind of flavor. Um, but burley has no sugar so you know when we talk about flavors of cocoa or flavors of nuts or flavors even of clove or wine imagine aspects of those flavors but with no sweetness whatsoever uh, burley really has no sugar uh, once it's gone through the air carrying process and the areas where it's grown um, the leaf really doesn't have much sugar to speak of even even before the air curing process, which is part of the reason that air curing is used. Uh, what little sugar there is is lost through that, that process of air curing. Differs from flu curing where you're using uh, heat to try and set the sugars that are present because in Virginia type tobaccos grown in sandy soil, they have lots of sugar. So you want to solidify that sugar uh, with air cured leaf, uh, you're not thinking about trying to preserve any of the sugar because there's not much there to speak of initially. Uh, so without further ado, let's go ahead and smoke these and talk about what they taste like, starting with white, white burley. The flavor is really soft. 
uh, very, very mellow. Um, there are chocolate notes, um, almost creamy notes, um, no spiciness whatsoever, but the nicotine is certainly present and, and I can notice it immediately. Slightly tannic um, and a flavor that is maybe reminiscent of like the aftertaste of say a natural peanut butter. It's very satisfying, um, it's very mellow, um, and the flavor is unobtrusive, and so you get a lot more, a lot more nicotine than, than you do strength of, of taste from, from this tobacco. Um, we use it in blends sometimes to be the base of a blend, other times to be used in very small quantities just to bring the nicotine level up a titch, and you don't really notice the flavor of, of the burley other than that. Um, by comparison, let's smoke the uh, dark burley. Really, really deep, uh, woody sort of flavors. Um, flavors that are reminiscent of uh, a very old red wine, um, clove. There's chocolate there too, but it's like it's like burnt chocolate. Very very rich and a lot more nicotine. Uh, again, really immediately notice the nicotine. Sort of a spicy uh, flavor that comes and goes. Uh, not so much like red pepper, um, more like a like the tingle or the tension between uh, spices like cinnamon and nutmeg uh, can kind of work against each other to create this sort of spicy tingle on your tongue, that kind of spice. Really, really pleasant. Um, I actually, actually love Burley quite a bit and we use it a lot in a lot of our blends. Um, you know, if you're interested in trying out uh, some blends that showcase these tobaccos, I would recommend Old Joe Krantz, uh, Haunted Bookshop, the Burley Flake series, um, or the Melville at Sea series, particularly uh, John Marr and, uh, and Redburn really showcase nicely the use of uh, white and dark Burley. So hope you guys have enjoyed this and uh, look forward to doing the next one. See y'all later. Bye-bye.